Wherefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh Three days ago, Andrew's mother died. The sudden loss of a mother's love is the nearest experience to the agony of death that a child can suffer. It opens a wound in the mind that may never heal. If not treated properly, it may lead to juvenile delinquency, to a mental institution, or to a fiendish crime. To his aunt and uncle, Andrew's mother was a simple woman, a poor woman, a good woman. She worked in a supermarket, and she did whatever she could for her second husband and her growing child, age 13. What chance will this boy have for a good life? who has lived in a broken home, on the edge of poverty, and then suffered the loss of his mother. We commend the soul of our sister departed, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. To Andrew, his mother was almost the whole world, a great ideal, a source of inspiration, and a fountain of approval. And she liked the radio. She would listen to it for hours. In her house, the radio was always playing. But the day she died, a strange thing happened, a coincidence. The radio stopped playing. It was still on, but no station came in. Such a simple coincidence can mean a great deal to the imaginative and superstitious mind of a child. It meant something very important to Andrew, whose mind refused to accept the reality of her death. Instead, he fought with all his senses, with every fiber of his being, to bring her back to life, to recreate her image. He looked for her image in the mirror and turned it around the room as if it were a searchlight that could pierce the darkness of her death. going to bed. Got to work in the morning. We still got to eat, you know. Andrew's stepfather was not a cruel man. He just didn't understand. He had never had any children of his own. He was embittered by life. He worked hard for small pay. And what little affection he was capable of, he preferred to shower on his cat. I was wondering, could I sleep here with you tonight? In her bed? Are you crazy?
Well, what are you waiting for? Go to bed. In his loneliness and out of his longing, an idea occurred to Andrew. If he could fix his mother's radio, perhaps he could bring her back to life. To do this, he began to study and to steal. His tools came from the school workshop. Each child is an unique individual, and his problem is individual. Andrew was deeply ashamed of his ragged clothes, so he only went to school when he thought he could make a good showing. To be a radio repairman, and it will take four years. That was a wonderful report, Andrew. Excellent. But you didn't tell us why do you want to become a radio repairman? To fix my mother's radio. <laughs> Enough of that. Enough of that, I said. That's enough of that. <laughs> Andrew had a great inner strength, and he demonstrated his rebellious nature in a strange way. Give me another hot dog and more salad. He bought more food than he could obviously eat or pay for. For his mind had transferred his hunger for love to a hunger for food. But his strange behavior was not going unnoticed. The school counselor, at the request of the teacher, who wanted to help Andrew, was keeping an eye on him. What do you want? The volleyball. I'm the captain. I get the volleyball. Wait your turn. Though rebellious, Andrew wanted desperately to be liked by others, to feel that his schoolmates accepted him as one of them. Unable to get along with the children at school, he found some release of tension playing with his little cousin. What on earth you got there? See? A fish that flies. You ought to see it go. Honest, it will. So will you. See? It ought to work now. What you doing, fixing the radio? It's on, it's on, you fixed it. This was the magic moment for Andrew, the moment he believed his mother would reappear, would come walking through that door. It's not loud enough. Gotta fix the volume control. I can hear it. I can even dance to it. Not loud enough, I said. That's her dress. Come back. Come back. You got my mother's dresses. You can't take them away. Wait. Stop. Now, Andrew decided to get even. He started with a cat.
That was only the beginning of Andrew's effort to strike back. What's the big idea? Keep your hands up! Don't touch me! Keep away from me! How are you? I hate you, you hear me? I hate you! Andrew, Andrew, listen to me. If your mother were alive, she wouldn't want you to hurt anyone. I know. I'm sorry. I wasn't going to hurt anyone. I wasn't. In the privacy of the counselor's office, Andrew <laughs> broke down. I know why you're crying, Andrew. Sometimes we cry <laughs> because we feel sorry for ourselves. And that's no good. But sometimes we cry because we've lost someone dear to us, and that's all right. You go ahead, cry all you want. Takes more than one cry to get over something like that. Your age, I used to be a real crybaby myself. You were? Yes. Look, Andrew, I'm not going to punish you. I only want to help you. And I'm going to introduce you to someone else who can help you, a psychologist. She knows boys and girls like you. If I ask her to see you, will you let her help you? Maybe. It wasn't going to be easy to help Andrew. It broke. That's all I'm gonna do. Well, Andrew, there's a sharpener over there. He was hostile. He lacked confidence. And he was afraid to trust anyone. So he tested her. The psychologist gave him room for his rebellion, overlooked his errors at first, and built up his desire for her approval. Now, Andrew, people see all sorts of things in these ink blot pictures. What do you see? Nothing. Except maybe a monster. Is that all you see? That's all. From a lot of work with Andrew, she began to understand him. To Andrew, the world was a monster. He couldn't see the people on the card. Instead, he saw... Two witches bending over a pot? Here, he saw a giant, big and strong. He felt weak and small next to him, as he did with his stepfather. Andrew wanted to be friends with his stepfather, but he felt that his stepfather threatened him. And this one. Here he saw little animals, rabbits eating, then a dish of ice cream. This suggested his hunger, not for food, but for love. Where Andrew should have seen a female figure, he refused to see anything. 
For though he did love his mother, he hated her too for having died on him. Nothing at all? No. Though no group of tests can ever diagnose the mind of a child with certainty, when combined with the insight, warmth, and understanding of the psychologist, they may point the way to the true needs of a child. There was hope for Andrew, but the reconstruction of his character would take a long time. The counselor, using the returning of the gun as an excuse, decided to see what could be done in the meanwhile to improve Andrew's life at home. There was some truth in what the stepfather had to say. He said that he was a poor man. It was all he could do to keep a roof over his head. He didn't know what to do. He gave Andrew whatever he could afford, but Andrew spent it all on his radio. He felt Andrew was a smart boy, old enough to take care of himself. I did when I was 13, he said. So why can't he? It's the school counselor, Una. He wants Andrew to show him the house. Okay, Andrew. I'm ready for the tour, if you are. She cleans the house. They've been talking about getting married. Well, do you like her? Well? She's all right, I guess. This is my room. That's my mother's radio. I ought to beat the living daylights out of you. Leave him alone. He didn't mean no harm. The way them kids been making fun of him, I'd have done the same thing myself. Get to your room. You get that nip for the cat like I told you? You bet. <laughs> One morning, the thing the counselor and the psychologist were afraid of happened. Open that hand. Open up. I'll break you a stealing. I'll break you a stealing if I have to break every bone in your body. You hear me? Every bone in your body. With the destruction of the radio, the real world came crumbling down. Andrew retreated deeper than ever into the distorted world in his mind, where now he wanted to kill his stepfather. He could not carry out this act of murder in reality, so he set out to do it by magic. In his twisted mind, Andrew was drowning his stepfather. Almighty God, we commend the soul of our sister departed, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The murder was done, and Andrew disappeared. He had intended to return the soldering iron. He was on his way to getting well, but now his seat was empty. 
and his absence was reported to the juvenile department. Okay, we'll keep in touch with you. He's sure a sweet-looking kid. Any ideas where he might be? Run away, that's all. His aunt says he's been gone four days. Hello, son. What brings you here? Andrew was on the run, running away from the murder he had committed in his mind. And wherever there were loud noises, violence, or the sadistic suggestion, there was Andrew, one high-pitched, piercing note away from real tragedy. how much the little things you do for children mean to them. At this point, Andrew was an animal, and though, of course, there were many factors which combined to bring him to this house, he later said that in his confusion, this was the only place where he had any hope of love, and this because of what a little girl had done for him one day with her twinkling eye and her flying fish. I'm hungry. Where you been? In the moment of this genuine, awkward embrace, they decided they would like Andrew to live with them. They contacted the school counselor to help them carry out the adoption. Is this what you want too, Andrew? Yes. Oh, yes. He resumed his work with a psychologist and began to discuss his problems more honestly, allowing her now to help him. And his answers improved. He saw the people not only as individuals working on a ranch, but as a family, too. And he identified the woman as... And that's the... Mother. Okay, you guys, let's go! Come on, come on. 
You, you, you on that side. You, you, you on this side. Come on, let's go. Ready? On the double. Let's go, boys. Without letting the other kids know that Andrew was getting special attention, the counselor got him into the game. His confidence gradually returned. And in the workshop, he began to win the approval of the children himself in a very simple way. And in his new home, Andrew showed the first signs of winning his serious inner struggle. Daddy got me a kitten. See? In this moment, his anger melted, and he found himself capable of returning the love and affection that had been showered upon him, that had in fact given him another chance to live at the age 13.